Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Uh, please welcome uh, Master Instructor Anders Motz from Toncraft Werk in Austria. Hello, hello. And Andy Hageman all the way over in Tokyo. Hi Andy. How you doing? <laughs> and myself, Dave, uh, we are here to show you the inner workings of uh, the, pro the industry's favorite app, uh, which is, of course, Pro Tools. We're going to jump in today's question from KK. And his question is this. Hey, guys, how to remove the pre-bars? It's minus 18 bar count. I want the session to start from the bar count one. Thanks in advance. And uh, Anders knows all about this. Yeah, sure. Uh, great question, KK, and, and it can happen by mistake. Uh, it's 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 not uh, the, the end of the world, and we will show you how to fix this. Okay, so I've got this session right here, and as you can see, um, my song starts uh, currently exactly here, where the music starts playing. That is correctly numbered bar one, which means that I have a bar zero, which you don't see regularly in Pro Tools. And if it would have started any later, that would be minus one. And that's something that KK here sees minus 18 as his starting bar, basically. So there are a couple of ways to get to this position. One, which I think that he has done, is that he has taken this little song start marker, which is this red diamond, and by accident, he has dragged this to move the song start. By the way, as I'm doing this, as you're seeing on my screen, when I'm dragging the song start marker, it's actually moving all of the tick-based tracks, audio clips, because they want to remain on bar one where they were recorded. So how can you fix this? If he would drag this now, the song start marker to the start, it would actually also move all of the tick-based tracks clips on the timeline, which might not be the thing that he wants to do. So there are two ways to fix this. Number one is going to the event operations menu, going into time operations, and only realign the song start, meaning nothing else on the timeline would move in this case. The other way that he can do this is to renumber the bars. So basically keeping the song start marker where it currently is, if he wants to have that, and go event, down, 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 there you go. Renumber bars, there you go, thank you, thank you. So basically putting in minus 18 becomes bar one, which would then renumber the bars. So this song start marker actually has a couple of practical applications. So when you change the song start, that little red diamond, which is your song start icon, will change, right? You're moving the song start and everything will move or not, depending upon what you want to do. But do me a renumber bars and go ahead and change bar zero to bar one. Okay, now go ahead and renumber that. Now, something interesting and different has happened here. Now, bar one is the beginning of the timeline, but it's not the start of the song. Why would you care about that? Well, if you hit the return key, it moves to the beginning of the timeline. However, there is a modifier key that you can hold that will move from wherever your cursor is to the song start. And I believe that's control, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? You're absolutely right. Control return will move to the song start marker. And that's that's useful. Um, I, I think a lot of people will, will gravitate towards having their song always start at bar one at the beginning. But a lot of more experienced people will, will do exactly what Anders is doing, um, having a little bit of breathing room before to have things like like inhaling or drum click offs or MIDI notes. Because remember, any MIDI note that you play, even one tick before bar one, beat one, tick zero will be cut. And so this is one of the ways that, especially back in the old days, we used to work all the time in DAWs and MIDI sequencers. And one thing that we had to do is we had to think, okay, so you know, we had to we had to do manual renumbering in our heads all the time. Now we don't have to. We can have Pro Tools mm. do it for us. So uh, for me personally, I I like to have my song start marker where the song actually starts, and renumber that or have that actually be 
bar number one, which then creates minus yep. bars for me for a pickup or a drum fill or just for a breath or, as you say, not to miss a note when I'm recording MIDI. So uh, can I ask yeah. a can I ask <laughs> can I ask a quick question, Enders? Yep. Um, on the the transport bar, mm -hmm. the the button that returns back to the beginning of the timeline is labeled return to zero. Mm -hmm. So if um, if zero is at the beginning of the timeline, it will return to zero. Is, is the zero significant? If the zero was moved, would pressing that button move it back to zero or the beginning of the timeline? So it's it moves it to the to the uh, uh, to the start of the session, uh, so independent of where your song start marker is. So if you press, so this it's not button, really RTZ, RTZ. It's back to the beginning of the timeline. It's the exact. Well, it's 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 zero yeah. zero minutes, zero, zero samples seconds. actually. So uh, right. So mm -hmm. uh, so um, uh, so it's the same operation as pressing return. You said something quite uh, important. Uh, earlier on in the discussion, uh, moving tick-based tracks. And when you were moving that song start, um, pretty much everything seemed to be moving except your video track. So there are elements of the of the session that won't move or could potentially not move. Yeah, so if I, I scroll down further a bit, and now we've got some tick-based tracks, which is this one. I can see that it's tick-based because of that little metronome symbol is the tick-based symbol. And I've got some audio tracks here that are sample based. And as I mentioned before, when moving the song start manually, it will automatically keep all of the tick based tracks aligned with the numbers of the song start. So if I move it, you will see that all of the tick based information is actually moving, but the sample based things are remaining in their locations. And just do me a favor and show the click track next to the delays key track. So so hide track two, three, and four. Or, or, or drag it up, great, fantastic. We have two different kinds of tracks and they're both aux tracks, but the difference between these two tracks is that one of them is tick-based and one of them is sample-based. So the click track is a tick-based track, which means all of those automation breakpoints, like the clips, are tied to a tick-based musical location. The delay keys, is not. It's a sample-based track. And just go ahead and add some uh, automation breakpoints in there. Just great, fantastic, beautiful. Now, when you move the song start, you'll see something that can potentially do terrible things to your mix. He's now changing the automation and moving the automation of the click track because it's tick-based. But that delay is not moving because it's sample-based. And this is always the behavior whenever you're using the workflow that Anders is using right here. Whenever he's dragging, that's really your only option. And what you could do if you wanted to work that way is you could change all your tracks to tick-based and then everything would move, but there's another way to do it. And what's that way? Including all of the sample-based tracks, yeah. That's the one. So when you're in the time operations window, move song start, one of the things that Anders did already is he moved the song start only, but you also, right underneath that, you have the song start, all tick-based tracks, that's non-negotiable, or no or all sample-based tracks. So if you go ahead and moved your song start to whatever you wanted to do, there you go. And now everything has moved down the road a bit. Sample-based tracks, tick-based tracks, doesn't matter. And trust me, when you're moving stuff around like that, you definitely wanna make sure that you're applying this to all your tracks. So a question here, Andy, uh, I've got some tracks that are hidden now. Did it move the hidden tracks as well? In the time operations window, there are some operations that do not apply to hidden tracks. Go ahead and hide some of those tracks, please. I'm hiding a couple of tracks up here, yeah. And without leaving the time operations window, go ahead and change that to something else. There you go. Now, this is very similar in function to Move Song Start with one very important difference that Anders was asking about. Warning, hidden tracks will not be affected. This is one of those things can really catch you. It doesn't apply to the Song Start thing, but it does apply to some other time operations. Um, what about tracks that are in folder tracks? Yeah, so routing folder tracks can be tick-based or sample-based, just like an aux track. Um, basic folder tracks are neither tick-based or sample-based. They're just folders. But the contents in them can either be sam sample-based or tick-based. Or, or a mixture of both, yes. So I, I think we've really uh, explained all of the different variables and why you would also move the song start or why you might want to renumber 
the first bar of your proto session and all of the alternatives here and, cru hope. and crucially the thing to look out for mm. yeah and 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 you know i think a lot of folks when they're starting out they want they want the beginning of their song to be right on one mm -hmm. um and that's fine there's nothing inherently wrong with that but you may find as you as you gain experience that having a little bit of breathing room before like like what anders saw mm -hmm. i'm sure is the way he worked 90 percent of the time right yep. is to have your, your 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 song start at bar zero which sounds in you know weird and wrong but it's completely fine and then have your your um you know the actual song begin at bar one which is the second full bar on your timeline yeah or or start at minus one that's something that i do a lot as sure, well with two uh, bars leading yeah sure yeah, exactly I'd imagine uh, and, it would and be... of course this and I, th I think this also has to do with a little bit of musical tradition and it depends a bit on what your genre is because if you're just creating as you go this might not have huge implications but if everyone in your studio is reading from charts uh and you you say like play it from bar 73 that would be the, the correct bar in Protos if you renumber your your song start to actually start on bar one, right? I was going to say I mean, something Lyra. similar, that if, if you're preparing mm. stuff for charts as well, because uh, mm. obviously Pro Tools yeah, has its notator, totally. then you'll want your, your bars to start at a particular place. Yeah. And by the way, it didn't always used to be that way, right? We, mm. we used to still want to have that one, one bar before, but we didn't have the option back in the old old days the bad old days to to renumber so you know back in the in the times we oh it's five o'clock in the morning and we're like let's start at bar 14 which is what bar 15 right okay right bar 14 <laughs> which is bar 15 and you know it's, it was the most confusing thing in the world so so being able to define where your song starts and 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 not have it tied to the beginning of your timeline has been a real godsend yeah uh, uh, exactly but but don't get the wrong impression it might sound like this is a new function in protos it's been oh, in no, there no, no. for for literally as long as i can remember so yes it's not that it's new it's that i'm very very old <laughs> <laughs> Great discussion, Anders. Uh, awesome stuff. Hopefully that, that helps a few users uh, understand how to manage their timeline a little bit. Um, if you got a lot out of this, uh, it really helps us to hit the thumbs up icon on our video. If you haven't yet subscribed to Pro Tools Answers, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we upload our latest videos. If you also head over to ProToolsAnswers.com, you can find out what we're, all, what we're up to over there. And you can subscribe to us as well. We're a, we're a community funded channel. Uh, so joining our inner circle helps us keep the show going and you've got some terrific benefits involved in that as well including uh, monthly masterclasses and getting involved in our that closed... will help you a lot of course yeah, yeah get involved in our closed <laughs> yeah. discord server as well in fact that the masterclasses are just magic you know an hour and a bit every month of, of just talking technique and answering questions and it's it's a terrific tool yeah it's such fantastic uh uh, members in there i mean those guys are just unbelievable and, uh, and ask some great questions really yeah. interesting questions it's always good fun so uh, if you fancy checking out uh, our inner circle head over to brosalsanswers.com as well uh leads me to say thank you very much to andy you bet thank you very much to anders thank you you know anders you're right you are right <laughs> you are right you're right. My name's Dave. You're this right. is Pro Tools Answers. Uh, we'll see you next time, guys, and we're out.